Life ain't about drugs It's not about filling in the gaps of the ones we've lost What is life people ask What is life I say Life is a gift your mum and dad gave you Oh, so, yeah, I was born in um, London, Stratford, Hackney Way, so I was um, born there. Then I moved, obviously, down here when I was three years of age. So, uh, uh, yeah, I've been living in London, didn't know London as much, but, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I've moved there, came into uh, foster care with my sisters, so we were, um, I was three at the time. My mum, she was, like, been throughout and you know, kind of been on her own for most of her life. I had my nan as a, like a second role, and yeah, my dad was just rarely never there. Yeah, so it was all like, um, so yeah, I had foster mum and a foster dad, but uh, my sisters were the big roles within, like, obviously, not knowing these people, they're kind of strangers to you at first. It was having, um, yeah, having those two sis um, sisters play that brotherly role, play that sisterly role, and in a way play the parent role. It was hard in a way because it's they you learn you learn things from it, from obviously like what women can do, um, obviously what they're like they're kind of pictured and like different women are pictured like differently. They're like second class, things like that, that they have in the past. So to play that role where like, it's all female, it's kind of quite hard for my sisters, but then I had to kind of think, oh, maybe I have to play the kind of male role within the kind of circle of, um, yeah, the circle of sisters. And obviously the women being like dominant, it shows that women can go on, but then you need a little bit of that yin and yang to push through like with what you're doing but I think it's quite quite a mixed reaction. Um, it's been quite a like, diff like I think pain everyone kind of encounters differently and I feel like everyone's been through some sort of pain wherever, wherever it might occur or has occurred but I feel like as I said, um, when I was in like, in school, it was kind of just hot, like, bottling it all in, and it was kind of like no one can, like no one need, uh, obviously no one needs to know. But it was kind of like uh, hiding away from what I learnt later on in life and being um, a little bit older and understanding a little bit more. But it was more holding back from that. Yeah, I did boxing, I did um, cadets, so those were the two things that pushed like me forward into what I wanted to do and they were very, as, um, cadets was mixed, boxing is quite a physically and mentally kind of ch challenging sport, so it's kind of, it's kind of coming off really, I don't know, different and in different ways, but they did show, especially cadets, it showed the mix of all different genders working together. So, Pink Suits is a collaboration between me and my partner, Lenny. Um, we started it a couple of years ago. Mostly we started it just so we could work together. Um, and we wanted to make, we started the band, we, neither of us really did music, but we thought, let's start a band, because that's nice. Um, so we kind of, we wanted to make a combination of music and dance and other kinds of performance that kind of looked at, initially we sort of looked at our relationship, Lenny's male and I'm female, so we often get sort of like groups as like a straight couple, which is fine, I guess, but we also wanted to look at sort of our gender roles within our relationship because we're not... Um, we're not such a sort of typical relationship, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so we basically like Pink Suits is kind of our collaboration, looking at gender, looking at sexuality, looking at sort of the way we dress. We share clothes a lot, so we often get a lot of attention. If Lenny wears a skirt, he gets like all sorts of attention. I shaved my head and people thought that was like kind of weird. Um, so just looking at these kind of like gender stereotypes and how 
yeah, ha what, why we have them and this sort of thing. Because the, the, because the band is just a two-piece, so it's just Lenny and I, we can notice really clearly the sort of like, um, just like the way we get treated slightly differently when we do shows. Like for instance, Lenny, people usually speak to Lenny about whatever it is, even if it's something with the drums, which I'm the drummer, they'll sort of like ask Lenny the questions about it, which again, it's fine. Like maybe that they just feel a little bit more comfortable with him or whatever, but it's, it's interesting to sort of see this play. And in our music, so far our music is actually not really about gender, but the way we perform is sort of, you know, we, we, we wear clothes that are a little bit more androgynous or that sort of thing. I think in the band so that that kind of brings gender into it a little bit but actually the music is more kind of political and yeah so it's not necessarily the songs aren't really about gender but I think underlyingly it's kind of it's always a part of it so yeah but I if I if I want to be kind of heard I kind of have to really assert myself which is fine and I can do that and it is fine, but it's just like something that we're really aware of within our work to kind of, because in our relationship, it's very, we're very equal and like, it's never kind of like, yeah, neither of us really have like, oh, I do this and you do that. We're very like share everything kind of thing. So it's nice in, in working with other people to try to keep that balance, which is sometimes harder because it is, it is definitely like Lenny kind of gets approached more or s sort of yeah I think people just kind of like gravitate towards him more which maybe it's to do with him being a boy but also maybe it's just to do with his personality it's kind of hard to tell <laughs> um well mostly we just get everything taken down because if Lenny has his top off I'll usually have my top off and my nipples are not allowed pretty much anywhere so we we have we struggle with that we get a lot of stuff taken off of Facebook we had our our band page taken down and they just yeah they they don't let you have female nipples so that's the main the main thing that's kind of annoying and you kind of we we purposefully initially we purposefully put those kind of things on online because it's like we both have our tops off it's really clear um but they just take they just take it down and then they delete you off of facebook and it's just actually more of a hassle than it is so now we're like ugh fine we're censoring ourselves a little bit I don't know I think Lenny gets a lot more attention for the way he dresses because he's got like long pink hair he often dresses quite femme and skirts and dresses in the summer and mostly people are quite nice like they kind of they'll he gets a lot of comments and a lot of stares but mostly if people say something it's quite nice which is reassuring but he does get a lot of like men kind of like getting a little tense around him which I think yeah it's their own thing not him but yeah yeah my mates invited me so I went down to training and never really looked back so can't say that's what got me here but uh, yeah just friends now nah, football is mainly the, mainly the only one didn't weren't really too fussed about anything else I've got two younger brothers uh, only a year between us so we'd always play football and just mess around Mess around playing. Uh, my friend's um, dad, funny enough, he was the manager, but he always like, sort of looked after me, gave me a little bit of special treatment and that. And he was just one, one guy I still talk to now, and he's still my best mate now, so I can't really complain. Yeah, well, I haven't been here long, I've been here about three months now, so, but what I've gathered, um, finding out about the club is that they're friendly, they're, uh, they're a good crowd, good bunch, the chairman's a good. He wants to be in and around it. As we spoke about earlier, they're, they're all about getting all the kids here, the women. Uh, they're really family oriented club. So, it's only good vibes I get from Margate Football Club. Um, I'm just surprised it didn't happen sooner because I didn't see why it wouldn't. I just, I just think it shouldn't be brand, branded like a. Uh, it shouldn't be about uh, gender or anything like that. And, but I think it's, it's brilliant to see. Maybe just that they should just put more funding in it mm. with the amount of money in football but I don't see why they can't take a little bit out whether it be the TV money or whatever the, even FIFA or whatever they do because they're as corrupt as anything <laughs> so a little bit of money when that uh, being put into the women's, women's game 
whether it just be even bringing them along here, the, 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 the ball girls here, and they help out a lot. Maybe their caveman attitude. <laughs> Maybe the, the, the old saying that the women should just stay at home and clean and cook, do whatever, they just shouldn't be at the post war times and things like that. We're just haven't adapted. The same sort of thing with racism, which it just shouldn't be here. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is sad that people are scared to maybe what well, we say come out and reveal their sexuality. But um, I think it'd be down to that person how they want to come about it. But if anyone, if I knew of anyone or anything, I'd, I'd back them 100%. Uh, I don't see there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I just hope that we can hopefully find the time and place and accept it because. Oh, just there is nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And uh, I hope that someone does actually come out and do it and be brave enough to do it because it's happened in rugby, I think. Yeah. I think it's is it Gareth Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's the, the biggest, scariest man in the world, but he's just shown that he, he, he likes men. <laughs> so I don't, I don't see a problem with it at all. If it's accepted in rugby, it should be accepted in any sport, really. Maybe the the changing room mentality that. Um, I won't say too much about it, but it's such a bravado and a lot of acting, I feel, and certain views people have or how they should live their life and what life should be like is not accepted by some people. Um, a lot of my emotions probably happen on the pitch, so you'll see more of me on the pitch, whereas outside of football I'll talk all day long and I'll give my opinion on that but other than that more aggression side is more on the pitch and stuff so you'll, you'll see more of my feelings on the football pitch whereas you wouldn't really get a peep out yeah, outside of it. So. Uh, yeah, like, I, I, I swear a lot more maybe on the pitch but other than that I try and keep it to a minimum but you, you, you just enter a different world I'd say when you play football, that's just speaking from experience and um, you're allowed to get away with more, so you do. You're just trying to express how you feel, maybe, and it's, it's okay to talk to people. That um, There is no right or wrong in whatever you choose to do in life, as long as you ain't hurting anyone. But um, yeah, speak to your parents. I think they're the, they're the people you uh, speak to most in your life, and if you have any worries or anything, then speak to them.